Hi, I'm Amanda Buckley, Manager of Nutrition Services at AGH, and I'm a registered dietitian. Um, Population Health put together this awesome osteoporosis event, and I'm going to talk to you about the nutrition aspects of it. Um, osteoporosis is often called a pediatric disease with geriatric consequences, um, a clever way to say that um, what you do during your lifespan before you're 30 can have great effects on whether or not you experience dilatory effects of osteoporosis later on in life. Um, peak bone mass is between 30 and 35 years. So if you haven't done, you know, stored as much calcium and um, beefed your bones up as much as possible before then, it's really hard to come back from that. Um, there are things that you can do, but um, so it's really important to focus on healthy eating, um, weight, low weight bearing exercise, um, reducing risk factors, things like that, even in your early years. Um, as you can see from here, bone growth and density is exponential in the beginning part of life. So that's why it's really, really important to focus on that early. Um, risk factor, there are some risk factors that we can't control, um, ethnicity, Females have higher risk than males, um, things like that. But there are risk factors that we can control. Um, some of them are nutrition related. Smoking, alcohol intake, um, low BMI, so really low weight, um, increases your risk of osteoporosis. Um, things like low calcium intake, obviously low vitamin D intake. Those are kind of the really obvious um, minerals. A lot of vitamins and minerals play a role in osteoporosis prevention. Um, the most common one that we hear about is calcium. So I'm gonna to talk to you about calcium a little bit just because um, you may not know about um, supplementation and things like that. Um, calcium is really important. As you know, um, we know a lot of foods that contain calcium. Um, in our diet, dairy foods, dark green leafy vegetables, things like that. Um, calcium recommendations are right here for all the different age groups. Um, I'm not gonna read them, but um, it's about 1200 to 1500 milligrams for adults a day. Um, and you wanna break that up into 500 to 600 milligrams at a time. Um, you don't wanna try to do all of it all at one time. It'll affect your absorption. Um, lots of foods that require that um, contain calcium as we know are dairy products, um, but there's lots of other foods that contain calcium um, that aren't dairy products. So um, if you're a vegan or vegetarian um, that doesn't eat dairy, there's plenty of ways to get your calcium in without taking supplements. Um, here's some examples of ways to get calcium in. Um, calcium supplementation may be necessary. You don't have as good of absorption with calcium supplements as you do through oral or through um, food sources of calcium, um, but they may be required if you're not getting enough. Um, about 30 to 40 percent um, absorption is what you get from supplements. There's two main types of supplements, calcium carbonate and calcium citrate. Calcium carbonate requires stomach acid to be digested, so you should take it with food. Um, these are things like Tums. Um, you have a little bit lower absorption of those. They are also more affordable though, so um, sometimes they can be used effectively. Um, calcium citrate is a little bit more expensive, but it doesn't need stomach acid to be digested. Um, these are good for patients that have had um, GI surgeries, um, bariatric surgeries, any kind of stomach issues. Um, if you're on a lot of PPIs or like um, acid reducers, um, you might need a calcium citrate um, instead of calcium carbonate. Um, this just talks a little bit about um, the differences between calcium supplementation versus um, the versus eating it through food. Um, you don't wanna to take too much calcium in through supplements. Um, it can increase your risk of kidney stones. Um, there's been some interesting heart studies too with very low sample sizes um, that say high, high calcium intakes could increase your risk of um, heart attacks, but that um, research still is a little bit inconclusive. So more, more to come on that. <laughs> um, interactions. Um, calcium can interact with absorption of iron. So if you're on an iron supplement, you don't want to take them at the same time. You want to separate them by at least two hours um, because it can affect how your body absorbs iron. Um, phytates can affect calcium absorption. They can bind to them while you're eating them. 
um, and affect your calcium absorption. These are in things like beans, grains that aren't processed, um, things like that. And then a really, really high fiber diet can also affect your absorption. Um, this is like over 50 grams of fiber, which is very, which is a lot. Most people are not consuming that much. Um, fiber is still really good for you. Refer back to the other video. <laughs> um, so the bottom line for osteoporosis prevention, um, eat a healthy diet with a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and whole grains, um, low weight bearing exercise, eliminate smoking, reduce alcohol intake, um, and if you need vitamins or supplementation, use those. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact our, we do outpatient nutrition consults um, through the Atlantic Health Center. Um, if you have any questions, you can give us a call. Have a great day.